Hello and welcome to the next video in MeanStack.js. In this video, we're going to be talking all about release 1.6. Now, we first want to take note of issue 208 being fixed. It allows you to put external URLs in the assets uh, of your JS and CSS when we can cat minify them. Uh, we were aware of the issue, thank you to Donna, uh, being able to not concatenate and minify them because we didn't pull in the external files and now we do. Uh, we do want to also note in that that when the first time the files get downloaded, sometimes you might have to restart the server. Note. Uh, but let's jump into the features, the new features. So first off, we have cleaned up the API URLs for users specifically. Uh, before we had accounts, reset, and all these things that were related to users, but we weren't calling them users. So now we have renamed and updated all the front end files and the proper back end routes to use API slash users. So everything related to users is now under the same uh, alias. Next, uh, we have linked Azure. So for those of you out there looking for a little Office 365 support, uh, we have linked up how to link in accounts and work with them. Now we have commented it out, but you have the ability to uncomment it and turn it on in the stack. Uh, we also want to note there that if you do not have cl a client secret or a client ID, it's just going to break. So that's why we commented out we don't have a test mean stack uh, code yet, or test mean stack credentials. But at some point we'll look at that, but we're really excited for that feature because we know, especially in the enterprises where uh, we do pretty well at, we can now support your, uh, your Office 365 solution, which is pretty awesome to us. So we're really excited about that. Uh, next is the debug page. We've added a debug page because we realized that, you know, People might get issues sometimes, but you don't know. You don't know if it's an Angular thing, an IE thing, a Firefox, is it a browser, is it a user, what is it? So we had a debug page with some simple information to help you figure out what might be wrong with this user's page. What are they using? Specifically, what are they using? What's their operating system? What version of the browser are they on? And, you know, window size, what their actual uh, height and screen size is that they're using. And all this information will help you debug. So we've put it out there at the slash debug route. You'll be able to check it out. It should really help you if you run into potential issues and don't know what's going on across, um, across from your users when you can't physically be right there with them. So next and last thing, a feature add in 1.6 that we are going to touch on. Um, there was some other small cleanup stuff that you can go through the release log if you'd like, but the last big thing we've added, and we're really excited about this. This is this is our little winner of this release. This is this is the one that did it for us that we really enjoyed having, and that is API key support. Now, you're thinking, okay, an API, static API key, that's great. No, we kind of built the hybrid model here, and we really like it. It is the same concept of having a public and a private key that the user never sees the private, and we hold on to it and they get the public key every time. Well, we added a small hybrid in, like we took the best of JWTs with the best of the public and private key and built in API key support by allowing the user to pull a token at any given time, allow to authenticate into the system with a token or a session, whatever they might have. You can put it on the route, you can put it in the body, you can use authorization headers, you can use basic auth, you have four different ways, technically five if you add in sessions, to authenticate into our system and use our routes. Now, this has been requested before to support people with other applications that want our data. You know, we had the sessions before, which is great, but other APIs don't want to create sessions. They want to have a token that they can use. And so we also opened up the API to handle getting tokens, resetting tokens, and creating tokens. Now, to create a token uh, and specifically create it, you have to put in username and password or you have to have a session. So that's pretty self-explanatory. But getting back to the hybrid point, we use the JWT to, well, we use the private key on the back end created with node UUID to create a secret key that is never allowed to see, is never allowed to be seen by the user. And with this key over here, we will use it to sign our JWTs per user. So when we send the JWT out, we sign it with the secret key and the JWT is public. And in the payload of the public key, or that key for them, we have their ID. So anytime that token comes back, 
we can go look up the user, grab their API key, validate that we sign this key, and then let them do whatever action they're asking. Now we also add in the refresh and also add it inside of the accounts page because if someone happens to get one of your tokens, it's allowed to work for however long you set it. In this case, I think we're set for 24 hours right now. You know, if you get someone that steals your API key, you go hit refresh, that will clear your secret slash private API key in the back that we use to sign all your JWTs with. And then once that's refreshed, any other tokens you had out there just became invalid. And the point I call it hybrid is because we intermingled the private and public keys with JWTs and JWTs stand for JSON web tokens. Now, uh, if you want to go check those out, they're really freaking awesome. They've made our life really easy. And with this model, we're, every time we respond back with a token, people are going to think we give the most dynamically generated tokens. Well, we don't. We're just utilizing the technology of JWTs with the ability to keep our secret and sign them and validate them on the back end. So we are really excited to give API key support. And it's more of called like tokens in the system. So be expecting to see tokens from now on. They're awesome. You have a bunch of ways to authenticate. You can open up your APIs now to other apps. And the last point I want to part out about the API key support is it works on top of any passport. It was a custom integration. Uh, we also looked at some of the other passport integrations you could put with API key local support and the code was all old. It was old. It was outdated. Just wasn't for us, so we built this custom solution that goes on top of whatever passport you're using. So if you're using Google Auth Passport, API keys go on right on top of that. If you're using Azure, if you're using uh, Twitter, whatever it might be, we can work with that. So as long as you're using a passport to authenticate, our API key will work right on top of this seamlessly. So what's this mean for you? This means awesome things for your app and allows you to share information with more people and to securely keep it and, uh, well, to do great things. So we're really excited between the debug page, the API key, the Office 365 support with Azure, cleaning up the API's URL and fixing a couple bugs. Man, this, phew, this is going to be a great release. We hope you guys enjoy this. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please feel free to reach out to us. Leave us an issue. Let us know your thoughts. Uh, we're giving it our all here. We're ready for what's next. Hope you guys are too. Um, Trying to think of this before I end this. I actually don't know what's next. Um, I think we're going to look at some uh, Google Auth to integrate into the system and some other authentic authentications. Uh, other than that, please by all means submit your issues and we'll work with whatever community is interested in. And that's it for us. Have a great rest of the day. And we'll see you guys soon.